This is the first of a series of lectures on molecular geometry. To predict the geometry of molecules, what their three-dimensional uh, what their three-dimensional structure is within shape within within uh, what the three-dimensional shape is, we're going to use something called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR for short Vesper Vesper theory and the idea with with uh, Vesper th theory is that the the same charges on an electron will propel one another and electron pairs will repel one another to get to a minimum energy state. Electron pairs within the same molecule will repel one another to get to a minimum energy state. They're going to, the electron pairs within a molecule are going to try to get as far apart as possible from one another to reduce the Coulombic repulsion that's present. Now, of course, within a molecule, we with, with all of the um, uh, Lewis structures that we were drawing last week, there are two different types of pairs of electrons. We have bonding pairs of electrons, and we have lone pairs of electrons. So the different possibilities of, of, of electron pair interaction So the interactions that are possible on the same atom might be bonding pair, bonding pair interactions, lone pair, bonding pair interactions, or lone pair, lone pair interactions. Here's, here's an example. Let's say we have, now, now within these, the, 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 the amount of repulsion, a bonding pair, bonding pair, will give the least repulsion. Because the electrons within a bonding pair of electrons are really, uh, for the most part, within, between the internuclear axes. They're not spread out. But the electrons within a lone pair are sort of more spread out. So these are going to give the least amount of repulsion between each other, and the most will be will be lone pair lone pair interactions. Let's look at and let's draw the the ammonia molecule. It's its Lewis structure would look like this where we have where we have a nitrogen, a lone pair of electrons and three hydrogens bonded. And so within this molecule we have the possibility of a bonding pair bonding pair interactions, right? This would be because there's a bonding pair of electrons here, there's a bonding pair of electrons here. So this would be a bonding pair bonding pair interaction between those two things. Between this pair of electrons and the lone pair, we have this sort of interaction. So the interaction uh, between these, there's going to be more repulsion between this lone pair of electrons and this bonding pair of electrons between the hydrogen.
Okay, so, so the, we, we will look at more detail about uh, what this means for structures of molecules as we go here. Okay, so let's, let's for, for now, let's think about geometries of molecules without lone pairs. So geometries of molecules without lone pairs of electrons in them. And so for now, what we're going to deal with at the beginning here also, we're only going to deal with, with a, a central atom, a molecule that has a central atom, and we're only going to deal with covalent molecules too. Okay, so, so, um, uh, so central atom... Covalent molecules. All right, so, so, so these are geometries of molecules without lone pairs of electrons, or geometries with no non-bonding pairs. All right, so let's look at some of the examples. Let's look at, so what here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, we're gonna make a table, so to speak. We'll start it here and give some examples. If we have a molecule AB, for example, an example might be HCl, the HCl molecule. So, so here's what I'm going to do. We have that. An example would be HCl. We draw the Lewis structure of it. We have HCl. What's the, what's the shape of this molecule? Well, it's a linear shape. It's a linear shape. We just have two balls on either end of, a, of, of, of one stick, really. And so that would be a linear shape. Let's say we have the following, AB2. An example might be beryllium chloride. Our best Lewis structure for this, after drawing it out, and it should look like that, where we have two pairs of bonding electrons, no, again, no lone pairs of electrons. Again, the shape of this, what's the shape of this going to be? It's going to be linear also. We have a stick, a ball on the outside, on each of the outside of the stick, so we're going to get a line. One of the difficulties with this chapter that I'm going to share with you now is the fact that it's very difficult for me to show a 3D molecular model of this um, on, on this screen. Uh, and so we will work with that. But one of the things that I would suggest you do is get gum, uh, gumdrops or marshmallows and toothpicks and make these different structures as we go through. And you'll start to be able to visualize things better. Some people are better at visualizing in 3D than others. And uh, for many people, it really helps to have a 3D model in front of them. And, and, and go and make these different structures. Let's say we have something with three things attached to it, a central atom with three things attached to it. A good Lewis structure for that might look like the following. So we have a central atom, no lone pairs of electrons, three bonding pairs of electrons. The shape of this is gonna be trigonal planar. So in other words, we have um, all three of these things are in one plane, of, in the plane of the paper. There's a central atom, and it makes a triangle. One thing I forgot to mention up here is that the bond angle between these things, let's look at the bond angle, for example, here. Well, it makes an equilateral triangle. So we have a bond angle of 120. Here we would have a bond angle of about 180 between the, between the chlorine and the chlorine. Let's say we have a central atom with four things attached to it. One example might be methane. And, there's, and what we have here, and this is one of, is, is we have something that's gonna be called tetrahedral. The way to draw a tetrahedral structure 
is, is so so what's happening is is we have a central atom and each of the four things is going to be at the at the um, the apex of a tetrahedron a way to draw this molecule is the following so we have two two different um, so so the carbon atom is in the plane of the paper the hydrogen two of the hydrogens are in the plane of the paper we have one hydrogen that's going to be coming out at us up into uh, out of the plane of the paper and one that's going back into the table that's a tetrahedral geometry for this and again i i, I urge you to make this geometry and uh, draw uh, or, or you know form it with uh, uh, gumdrops and toothpicks and for this geometry all of the angles between these are 109.5 degrees from each other okay we have two more left a b five so we have five things attached to a central atom one example would be pcl5 drawing that we'd end up with a phosphorus in the middle three chlorines that are all in the same plane and one going up and one going down. So the phosphorus, this chlorine, this chlorine, and that chlorine would be in the same plane of the paper. This one would be going back into the table and this one would be coming back out at us from the table. The shape that this makes, because this makes a triangle here, and so so this part makes these these mo these atoms, and I'll put in the um, lone pairs of electrons now. These make a triangle, and then these make a pyramid. This is called trigonal bipyramidal. And then there's one final geometry where we have six things, sorry, six things attached to a central atom. So for example, SF6, if we were to draw the best Lewis structure for that, what we would end up with is something that looks like this. And just for sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave off the lone pairs of electrons here, but I encourage you to, uh, to, to write them in. It's just a matter of being able to see what's going on. What we have here is, is um, our, the fluorines are all attached to the sulfur in the middle. And what you can think of this shape as being is, is it makes, so, so the shape is called an, octa, it's an octahedral shape because it, this makes an octahedron. Each of these faces here makes an octahedron. So it's an octahedral geometry. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the uh, the angles here for trigonal bipyramidal. I just remembered. These are 120, and then we have 90 degrees between those two. So we have 120 and 90 degrees for the trigonal bipyramidal. Those would be the bond angles or the, the between them. For the octahedral, it's 90 degrees for everything. What we really have is. Um, uh, the sulfur would sit, you can think of it as being at the middle of a, of a Cartesian, at the zero, zero, zero point of a Cartesian coordinate system. And then each of the fluorines would rest on the X, Y, and Z axis respectively. So, so you end up having this uh, geometry where you have six things bonded to it, but it's an octahedral geometry because the faces, if you complete the faces, makes an octahedron. All of this is shown in a figure in your text to be able to help. And again, it's very difficult for me to show molecular models here on this um, with this uh, uh, document camera and setup that we have here. But this shows it a little bit better. So here we have our A, B, 2, and we have two, two things bonded and so on. So these are the number of pairs of electrons 
Um, and we can think of, instead of these pairs of electrons, we can think of something bonded to them. So we have a linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral geometry, where we essentially have something on each uh, axis of the, of the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. Here you can also see a little bit better how you have 120 degrees between these bond angles, but only 90 between here. 109.5 between all of those. This is figure 10.2 in your textbook. And again, I, I urge you to get, get marshmallows and toothpicks or gumdrops and toothpicks and make these different shapes. If you uh, It can really help for visualizing them um, to, to do that.